Hello and welcome to my series about Old Shop and Mazurkas. Today we focus on the last Mazurka from Opus 41, Mazurka in C sharp minor, Opus 41, number 4. Definitely the longest of all four and pro probably the most complicated. So let me explain a little bit this. I start from the music this time. Just play for you a little bit of the first page or two pages so that we can absorb the music before I start to talk. So I finish here and uh, of course we can hear that there is constantly changing, something is constantly changing, there is, it's not only one mood. In this mazurka we have all three Polish folk dances, Mazur, Kujawiak and Oberek, all of, all of three are here. There is a few things, uh, there are a few things which uh, I think uh, it's necessary to talk about. First of all, Chopin is changing, definitely is changing. He is in Noel with George Sau, as we know already from other episodes, if you listen to them. Uh, and definitely he's very inspired. He is composing a lot, he feels good, he, his health is much better. But what is changing also in Chopin is one significant thing that he is deeply studying the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach and his Prelude and Fugues, which Chopin re-edited in Noel, he decided to make some changes and re-edit. Not because he thought he is better than the editors, but because he had some feelings that maybe they were wrong. That's exactly what he wrote in the letter to his friend. Uh, so it was a quotation. And as we all know, the music of Johann Sebastian Bach is probably the best teacher for everybody starting from very young musicians through students and also mature musicians we always can learn something from Bach and so did Chopin and starting from this mazurka we will hear more and more and more polypho polyphony in Chopin's mazurkas and the Chopin's pieces in general late Chopin is Chopin inspired also by Bach and very very much uh, using the polyphony and uh, also in this mazurka we have it um, a little later not at the beginning the whole mazurka starts from the silence i want to read for you a little bit the, what the great professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski polish musicologist wrote about this mazurka it is among the most beautiful mazurkas resembling a miniature dance poem it seems to arise out of nothing and ends the same way. Stephen Heller noted, what with others was a refined embellishment, with him was a colorful bloom. What with others was technical fluency, with him resembled the flight of a swallow. Well, this is just a swallow flight that opens the C sharp minor mazurka. Here I don't agree. I think the beginning of the mazurka It's not really a swallow flight, because swallow, you know, this is a bird. Swallow is a bird, a small black bird, and they fly very fast. So if we have a swallow flight here, it must be... But the beginning can be something else, some big bird maybe flying. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, only in the subsequent bars does the melody gain the requisite accompaniment. 
before sounding in a bright key and unfolding towards its plenitude. Plenitude, sorry. But it is also the new complementary theme that allows the piano to really dance and sing. It what follows the listener is led through a succession of new acoustic landscapes. This is very beautiful, acoustic landscapes. Here is a softened, perhaps intimate theme, but that also soon gains height and strength and swings like a kuyaviak. Anyway, I finish here, but I just wanted to tell you that indeed it's one of the most beautiful mazurkas and most complex and quite long as well. It starts from nothing, it starts from the silence. If we look at the score, it starts from the rest here. So it starts exactly from the silence, literally from the silence. And I think we should, we can imagine ourselves sitting, sitting alone in the house in some very comfortable coach, looking through the window in silence. And then suddenly we see something in the window, maybe a bird. Then left hand is coming, giving the color to the melody. And then this melody is changing to E major, so it's bright, brighter. The same melody, but brighter. And this melody brings us to the phrase B. And the phrase B is completely different, because suddenly we are dancing. We are in the middle of the dance of party. We have Oberek, so this uh, whirling, this circling uh, dance very fast. And um, also here we have the code, which we have in all mazurkas in Opus 41. I told you about it. One note. Of course, Chopin didn't write like this, he made it a little bit more uh, interesting by adding some notes to this note, but this note is the most important and it's really fascinating how Chopin used this repeated note in every mazurka in this opus. Anyway, let's play it in the in Tigris. <laughs> The second time, the violinist who is playing is showing off his technique. And he can play like this forever, because we can... All the time, all the time, all the time, whirling, circling, right? So we have... phrase C. And here, well, this is not really a dance, it's more like uh, some kind of story. Well, let's imagine we are sitting in this house, then the party came, everybody came and then there is a party. And then some little, some uh, young, beautiful girl coming is coming to us and she starts to tell us something that happened in her life. Maybe something like, oh, you know, you know, I met this beautiful man, very charming. Oh, and he's so charming that I fall in love with him. I fall in love with him. Let's hear. And then here we have the bell, like boom, and on here she is flying with her dreams. Maybe this bell, three times, again the code of the, the mazurkas, maybe this bell is the impression of him, the imagination of him. And this brings us to the next phrase. And 
means this phrase. This is also a very interesting phrase. If we continue with this image of the girl, here she is getting more and more sad. Listen, this is this is like a mazo, it's a dance. <laughs> But it's going down, so we we lose our good mood. Maybe she loses because she thinks. Maybe she thinks, oh, he's so far away. I probably I will never meet him again. He's too far away for me. So far away. I will never dance with him. And then she's dreaming. What is here? Pam pa pam pa pam pa pam pa pam pa pam. Of course, horses. Horses, you know, when horse uh, run very fast, he runs pa pam pa pam pa pam. So it was very common for composers to imitate the horse riding. Right, like this. So she is imagining, maybe, maybe he's dreaming. Oh, maybe he's coming with. In the horse, he's coming to me to see me. I will see him again. And it, it repeats the second time. And then she falls asleep. And then she dreams they are together. They came, to, they are together. And here we have the inspiration of Bach music because we have polyphony. So they talk together with each other. He says something. Maybe, oh, I missed you so much. I love you so much. She answers. And he. And he again. I will never leave you. I love you. So this duet is very important because it brings us back to the beginning, but with some changes. Can you see the difference? The first time melody was like this at the beginning. Here we have... I know it seems almost the same, but it's not. First of all, the rhythm is different. First, we have tam ta tam ta yam ta tam ta tam ta tam ta yam ta tam ta yam ta tam. Here we have without this dotted. Secondly, we have one note, two well, two note different. And the scale is very folk, Polish folk, but for me also it sounds a little bit like from India, like in Indian, Hindu. <laughs> Listen. Or some Arabic music, I don't know, maybe some Arabic music. Some Arabic music, maybe. But of course in Polish folk groups they also use this kind of scale. So I think this moment when it comes back, this is a dream. So I try to play as uh, always when I play this mazurka, I try to play it as as it, as as unreal as possible, as soft sound as possible. So when I finish, listen. again in E major so this is the same and what again party important moment I, in my opinion this is the ecstasy suddenly Chopin is changing this party for the ecstasy so um, 
ecstasy of apotheosis of happiness and he he writes it in such a beautiful way he's changing the base and this change of the base is just pushing us out to another world of ecstasy and after that there is a dancing so they are together they are dancing together mm-hmm. Uh, this is very important. Also, Chopin writes here three accents on three notes, so that these three notes should be played slower and with a huge emphasis on them. Uh, and we we should celebrate them. This 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 apotheosis of ecstasy. Listen. <laughs> here again the code which is a repeating note it's always repeating and the ecstasy starts and it uh, well it will bring us to the drama because all mazurka uh, at the end has the drama very similar to the first one from this opus when we had the ending This is the same happens here. The melody which we had at the beginning the same melody will be can you imagine this in forte fortissimo? Well, it's hard to imagine, but it will happen in forte fortissimo. Uh, but before uh, Chopin will uh, Chopin wants to create a, a feeling of uh, anxiety, some kind of pressure and I personally feel like I'm more and more scared. I'm afraid of something. So something is something is going on, something is going to happen. It's for me it's a little bit like for example I'm staying I don't know in some mountains and I look down on this on the on this at the city and I see a road and there is somebody driving I don't know a car and there is a, a, a curve and from the other side let's say there are big truck coming and another big truck and they two come come they are one trying to overpass another one and i already from this mountains i can see that soon they're going to crash because they they are just on the way to crash and they don't see it but i can see it and i observe and i'm like oh my god no please stop but i cannot say anything i cannot help it and here we have the same exactly thing described by music more and more scary and then a a disaster a dramatic disaster just listen to this i start from the ecstasy dramatic in my opinion this melody which was at the beginning so so sweet in a way sweet innocent that's the best word and then suddenly it ends so and then we have we change and then we have something which for me for very long time was a deep mystery It's a completely new melody. And all this mazurka ends in the silence. This melody is a very mysterious melody and for a very long time as I said to you I couldn't find I thought oh this is something I know I've heard it before very similar to something I've heard before but I don't exactly know what is this and uh, until maybe I don't know last week 
when I suddenly found what this reminds me that it's so similar to uh, to one piece of music which is by the way written by my my favorite composer uh, which is very similar to what we heard we heard <laughs> Listen to this. Especially here. If you play it one octave lower, and now. say I'm exaggerating you can say oh yeah I'm a philosopher I just found of course well I didn't tell you what the piece is this is Franz Schubert he's one of the last sonatas last but one sonata a major uh, well eight five nine this is um, sorry nine nine five nine uh, this uh, this could be a coincidence but you will not believe me but check it yourself on the internet when this Mazurka's Opus 41 were published, and when were published three last sonatas by Schubert, can you believe it was exactly the same year, the same time, actually? Schubert's last sonatas, of course, they were not published during Schubert's life, it, more or less 10 years later, exactly 1838-39. And this Mazurka's were published late 39 or early 40, depends on which country. Chopin knew Schubert music very well because he he was playing on, on, on one of for example his uh, one of the greatest French singers funeral exactly during the time while writing this mazurka Chopin played an organ on his funeral and played Schubert songs Schumann was a great admirer of Schubert can you imagine Chopin didn't know last three Schubert sonatas when they appeared in the world? I cannot imagine that. Can you imagine Chopin playing this, what I played for you, and without his heart being moved to tears? Chopin himself, so sensitive, I cannot imagine that. And I cannot imagine he was not inspired. So this is like a kind of bow or a kind of uh, saying, Schubert, you are great. Or maybe some inspiration. I definitely feel here. The ghost of Schubert, I would say. And so this is, uh, this is, this is, that's, I think that's all I, uh, I wanted to tell you about this mazurka. Of course, we can talk a lot, a lot. Um, when you listen to it again, I just play for you again, and in the meantime, while playing, I will try to describe all the all the episodes which we have here. We start from sitting alone. Then E major, so their sun is coming. starts and faster then the girl is coming and she's saying oh how oh, I love this beautiful man and I, I fall in love 
Luft. Sleep. He is talking to her. She answers. Thank you very much for listening all of this and I hope you understood it better. This is of course very subjective, this is my imagination. Um, to help me also to transmit something more than only notes, which is also of course very important for an artist. Thank you for watching, I invite you to listen all the other uh, episodes. Uh, we have already, I don't know how many, 20, 28 episodes probably. Uh, there is a playlist on YouTube, you can find it. Um, on my channel and I'm going to record more because the idea is to record all of the mazurkas so you are kindly invited to listen to the next ones also thanks and see you again soon bye bye <laughs>